Hey guys, welcome to the start of a new reading vlog. This is just gonna coincide really well with uh, the Summerween readathon that is currently happening. So this is most likely just gonna be a Summerween reading vlog. Um, I didn't upload a TBR in time because I didn't, it just didn't happen. So I'm here to show you the possibilities of the books. Um, like I said in a recent video, I haven't been doing readathons basically since quarantine started just because I've been in the slump of a century and having a forced TBR does not advocate for a mood reader who is slumpy. I've got a whole stack of books that I potentially want to read. There's definitely one that I'm going to get to because I have to, um, but will any of these actually follow the uh, challenges? I don't know. We're going to find out as we go. So this is going to be a very loose TBR. So the first book that is a definite book that I'm going to get to, I think covers almost all of the challenges, to be honest. And that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I am for sure reading this because this is my book club's book. And we actually purposely um, scheduled it for this week for anybody who wants to participate in it because this... Um, takes place in a haunted house. This could also apply to like a whole number of challenges. I want to say I'm going to use this as like Gabby's recommended book because I know she likes Riley Sager. I don't know if she liked this one, but like I said, this is going to be a very loose TBR for me. So this is for sure happening. Everything else beyond this, who knows? We're going to see what I get to. So I mainly chose to do this readathon specifically for that book, but also because a whole bunch of holds came in of audiobooks all at the same time right now that all apply to it. So I got the audiobook of Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Um, so that's perfect timing because this also kind of has haunted house vibes, kind of has, I don't remember what all of the prompts are, to be completely honest with you, but this just seems like a good moody, spooky story to read during Summerween when we're all trying to live vicariously through fall themed books uh, in the heat of August. So I will likely get to this because I do have the audiobook. I also just got the audiobook in of Catherine House, which is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I didn't buy a physical copy, but I have a feeling listening to it is going to make me buy it. This is like dark academia. It's very much like if we were villains, like mysterious, like boarding school feels, th dark things start happening. So I have the audiobook for that. I have a feeling that's going to be the one that I start today. I'm filming this early, by the way. It's Sunday. Um, so this this portion of the video is starting before the readathon starts. And I might just start it because I'm a rebel. Also, because I need an audiobook. I'm like out of audiobooks right now and I have to go to work in a couple hours. So I'm going to need something. So I might start Catherine House. I'm very much in the mood for that. Alrighty. Hey, it is... Wednesday. <laughs> I wanted to check in yesterday and then I just never did. Um, so update on what I've been reading as far as Summerween goes. I have finished Mexican Gothic. This was the book that I started first. It was not whatever I said I was going to start first. I think Catherine House is what I planned on starting first. Um, I listened to this first and it was amazing. Um, I gave this four stars. This I've seen so many good reviews for it. So I kind of went in with high hopes, which always makes me super nervous, um, especially because I know this is slightly historical. I think this is set in the 50s, but it's one of those books where it seems kind of timeless. Like I couldn't honestly place what time period it was at all while reading it because it's written in a very like gothic style, which means it's kind of like slow building, very descriptive, very atmospheric um, as it builds up whatever the tension is going to be. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did just because it was kind of a slow start, but there was no point when I was listening to this book that I was in any way bored with it or I wasn't enjoying myself thoroughly. Um, that being said, once this book hit its stride as far as like switching to like actual horror mode, I was so pleasantly surprised. I was not expecting this to be as gory and gruesome as it was. And I was so happy about that. What does that say about me? I don't know. Um, but basically this uh, kind of builds very slowly. And I went in after watching Murphy um, read and review this book. And she basically read this right after she happened to have finished reading The Yellow Wallpaper, which is a classic that I read in, I want to say 11th or 12th grade. Um, and analyzed thoroughly. It's like a 15 page story. Like it's a very short story, but it's considered a classic. Um, and it's about a woman who is in this room, just shut in this room. 
um, with yellow wallpaper, and she starts to, like, see things in the wallpaper, and it's essentially, like, her descent into madness, but is it really? This is, like, a really long novelization of that, and I loved it, and I like seeing Murphy's, like, parallels between them, so that was really cool to have that perspective going into it, because I don't know if I would have made the connection. I probably would have, because there is a scene where a person sees the wallpaper moving like there's something in it um but i don't know if i would have made that connection and i'm so glad that it was made for me but like i said once this got going with the actual horror gore it was so dark like it started out like kind of eerie and creepy and like gothic-y but then it was just like here's some gore and i was like oh okay let me eat it all up real quick. That was a gross description for that. I apologize. Next, I started Home Before Dark by Riley Sager, and I've hit the point where I'm really struggling with not binging the rest of it. Um, this, I'm on day three of the group read. I'm doing this with my book club this month, and it is so perfect for this readathon. It's like everything that you want to encompass in this readathon. It's like spooky, it's haunted housey, it's paranormal, it's tension y, it's all of the things. I am on the third day section, so I just finished um, up to here. That's a lie. I listened beyond. Um, I was listening to the audiobook on the ride home and I forgot to just pause it when I reached chapter 14. So I might be a chapter two in a little bit further. Who oh, man. This book is creepy. Like it, anytime you toss in like a kid who sees ghosts, I'm going to nope my way out of that situation. And I don't understand why more horror movies don't follow that philosophy. As soon as a child starts talking about things that they're seeing or they're hearing or they're experiencing, believe the kid, remove yourself from the situation. Like have, have people not watched horror movies? Don't, don't stick there. Um, so I'm loving the pacing of this because we're getting like past and present. Like we're getting, um, the story of her going back to the house 25 years later as an adult and trying to get answers because she doesn't remember what happened as a five-year-old. And then we're getting the story of her and her parents moving into this house when she's a wee child and horrible things happen and they flee from the scene and we don't know what it is. So I like having the timeline knowing that like that's coming in that perspective, but also uncovering it from the present day perspective. It's just paced very, very well. So I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Um, I will likely finish it tomorrow um, because I'm resisting binging it tonight, but I did also start the audiobook of Catherine House. Now I'm nervous about this because this was a book that it's one of my most anticipated books of the year. Um, as soon as I heard the blurb about it and I heard people starting to talk about it, I was like, this is going to be a book for me. I love dark academia stories. They're like some of my favorite stories ever to read and it's amazing. So what I'm nervous about the fact is this is well on its way to be one of my favorite books of the entire year. It's well on its way to be a five star read and I'm going to talk your ear off about this book. I'm loving every second of it. It's so good. It's so me. But when I go on Goodreads, it has a very low rating and it has a lot of reviews that start with disappointing. And I am so nervous. Like it's going to have to take a really drastic turn at the end for me to not love this story. But it has like a low three star rating. And that's because a lot of the reviews I was looking through are like one or two stars. So I'm so nervous. Maybe I just happen to be the very niche reader for this type of story because it's kind of blending dark academia with sci-fi, which is interesting. Um, and I'm liking it, but maybe it doesn't work for other people. So it's basically following... Um, our main character is a girl who gets accepted into Catherine House, which is this like weird, prestigious, dark, um, mysterious school. It's a college that... Um, has a very intensive application process. They only accept like the best of the best. It's set in rural Pennsylvania. Of course it is. I live in rural Pennsylvania. We get weird stories set here. Um, and you basically are like sequestered there for your entire three years that you're there. You don't have any contact with anybody outside of the school and you don't get to bring anything with you. You basically get to go there and focus on your studies and it produces like the best of the best. Like, most of Hollywood went there. Most of like world renowned scientists and doctors and mathematicians and theorists went to Catherine House, but none of them will speak about their experience there. 
So that's interesting. But the sci-fi part that's coming into it is there's a thing called plasm. It's very like not really discussed in the book, which is intriguing to me. Um, it, we know rumors that they were experimenting on their students years ago. That has supposedly stopped. Um, but I don't think it actually has, and we're starting to get scenes of, like, social isolation. Like, they, if you get in trouble, you get put in the tower, which means you're just isolated from everybody. And there's some weird cult vibes to it, where everybody kind of gets accepted into this ceremony, and you all get, like, pins put in the back of your skull, and they all started chanting and, like, hallucinating, and it was a whole thing. So I think there's a sci-fi element to that, and I think there's, like, experimentation happening which I'm loving. Like, that makes me weird, but I'm loving what I'm reading so far. So I'm, it's gonna have to take a really rough turn for me to not love this book, and I'm nervous. But as of right now, like, it's sitting at a five-star book for me. I'm only halfway through it. I'm at, like, f almost exactly 50% of the audiobook. So we'll see how the rest of it uh, finishes out. But that's where I'm sitting as far as an update goes for you guys. Okay, it is now Sunday. So it's technically the last day of Summer Ween, and I'm just gonna use this as my final clip for this reading vlog and for Summer Ween. I will likely end up starting, possibly finishing another book today, audiobook-wise, because I do go into work later today. But this is a good stopping point anyway, because I think I'm out of horror things to listen to, so I might just switch gears. Um, so in conclusion, since the last update, um, I have finished Home Before Dark. I loved it. This is my favorite Riley Sager book to date. It was just perfectly done. <laughs> it's exactly the type of like thriller horror vibes that I want and it wasn't in any way disappointing. It was just, I feel like Riley Sager has just gotten better at, um, reveal pacing as far as like slowly, um, developing the story and making you question everything, but then when reveals start coming out, they're not just like slaps in the face out of nowhere, like you can see the buildup. So it was great. I loved it a lot. Um, I gave it four stars. Definitely my favorite Riley Sager book, and that's all I'm gonna say about it, just because, again, it's a thriller horror, so you don't want to really spoil anything, but I loved... I loved it. I finished that, and I finished um, Catherine House. And I'm still sitting on this one. I think I still loved it. And I'm just like, I feel like I'm questioning it just because of what I talked about earlier, that it has very low reviews. And I still think that I really liked it. I think I'm going to be very much in the minority because it did kind of take a turn, but it was still really interesting to me. Like it was very unique and well done. The pacing's very slow, and I think that's what a lot of people would be turned off by because we never really got a climax or we never really got like a lot of buildup and a lot of like satisfaction at the end, but I was okay with it. Um, so it's this weird kind of gothic feeling dark academia story mixed with sci-fi, but it kind of is just like this fever dream of a story. Like it, it goes in weird directions that you don't really expect it to, and I loved it but I don't think a lot of people will. Like, it's very slow. It's kind of just bleak for a long time. Like, a lot of the story is not very happy, and a lot of it's just very depressing, and it doesn't really get better from that, but sometimes my dark little heart loves stories like that. Like, I'm okay if not everything is, like, happy and uplifting. This one was just very, like, it was rough, and I loved how it ended, and I don't think a lot of people would. So, um, again, all of these books are, like, horror thrillery type things, so I can't really give any sort of description beyond, like, a halfway point because I don't want to spoil anything for you guys, but it was just... Uh, it was very different than anything I've ever read, and if you are a fan of, um, If We Were Villains is the closest thing that I can think of because it's a very secluded school setting where a lot of dark stuff happens that slowly gets unraveled, um, but it's very adult oriented. Um, it's not explicit content, but there is a lot of like drug use and sex and just adult content in it. So, okay, yeah, rambling about that one, 
I'm giving that one four stars. I think I am gonna sit on it for a while before I really like settle on it, but I think I am giving it four stars. And while I was on a kick last night, because I was on such a high from Home Before Dark, I went on to Overdrive or Libby or whatever you guys use, my library audiobook program, to basically put myself on the hold list for Lock Every Door because that's the only Sager book that I haven't read yet. I read his first two and then I, I somehow missed Lock Every Door and I skipped to this one and this one was amazing so I wanted to keep going and Lock Every Door was available. So I just downloaded it and listened to the entire thing last night at work. It was great. It was not as good as Home Before Dark just because Home Before Dark is like the perfect Halloween vibes. Like it's literally set in a haunted house. Um, but Lock Every Door was another one that I feel like just had very weird paranormal type things happening that were explained really well and it was a very um, jarring plot twist at the end that I would never have seen coming. I don't think a lot of people would have guessed uh, what the plot twist is because it's not exactly something that happens or is real because it's a book. It's fiction. Um, so I think I'm gonna give that one four stars too. I liked Home Before Dark a little bit more. I will probably always pick up Riley Sager books when he releases new ones because I just think he has like the formula down for thrilling stories that will genuinely freak you out. Like listening to this one and a couple scenes in Lock Every Door, I audibly went, oh, like out loud to myself with headphones in. I was one of those people. Or like a scene would happen in this and I'd be like, oh no, leave. <laughs> like I would, I would say things out loud and then I would realize that I'm crazy. Uh, so those are the four books that I, I read. Mexican Gothic, Home Before Dark, Lock Every Door, and I've already, Catherine House. Those were the four that I completed this week. I still pick up Tokyo Ghoul because I have a couple hours before I go to work. So I might do that one. Did any of these meet all of the challenges? I have no idea. This was just a kind of a, a reading vlog that happened to, to turn into Summerween books because I had a lot of audiobooks that were horror based that just fit really well with the theme this week. So that's, that's where I'm sitting with my wrap up for this. Um, I started a new diamond painting this has been my newest obsession. I finished. Do you guys want to see my last one that I finished? This was the last one that I finished and I am moving on to the big leagues. I have upgraded to Diamond Art Club, large and in charge, and I'm buying accessories and it's becoming an issue in my life. And by an issue, I mean it's the best obsession ever. Um, when I discover new hobbies that work really well for me, I kind of go really hard. And that's the stage I'm in right now. I'm trying really hard to not just like buy all of the things. Um, and be responsible and be an adult about my purchasing decisions. Uh, but I'm, I'm approaching that point and it's bad. So if you guys are interested in diamond painting, I kind of thought it was dumb until I tried it and now I can't stop and I've ordered many things. So that is going to be it for my reading vlog for Summerween. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you participated, let me know. What was your favorite book that you read this week? Did you read a lot of horror this week? Or if you didn't, what'd you read? Just chat with me. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in my next video.